This is Robert Martellacci of the Mindshare Learning Report. I have the good fortune of having the Mindshare Learning Moment with Professor Chris Tyler of the School of Computer Studies here at Seneca College. Thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. Well, what, a, what an exciting event you held last week uh, with the Raspberry Pi Fedora Remix uh, 14 launch here at uh, Seneca College. Congratulations on that. Thank you. So it attracted uh, a room full of people. Uh, I presume a, a lot of the interest was around the, the software you've designed for the, uh, the $35 Raspberry Pi uh, technology uh, that's uh, soon to be released. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit about the evolution of this technology and the connection sure. to Cambridge. Um, Cambridge UK is a, sort of a high-tech hub, a little bit of a, a Silicon Valley for the UK. And uh, companies there were having difficulties hiring people that they needed with uh, computer science and electronics technology skills. Um, they approached Cambridge University and were told that they weren't getting applicants into those programs. And when they looked further into it, uh, found that the high school programs uh, were no longer teaching programming and electronics technology. Right. In fact, they were teaching um, word processing and, and spreadsheets, and that was about it. Um, Approaching some of the students, uh, they discovered that it was um, a difficult for students to get into programming because the family computer was considered an important and necessary device. And uh, the parents didn't want the students to be breaking that by programming it or mm -hmm. experimenting around with it too much. Uh, thinking back to the 80s and 90s, when a lot of people that are now in the industry were, um, were learning the technology, they realized that uh, the computers were cheap and they were easily programmable. You turned them on and they came up with a little prompt that said ready and invited you to, to program and to experiment with them. Right. And so uh, what they've done is, is produce a very small, very economical device. Uh, what we have here is an early prototype of the Raspberry Pi device. Um, the final production devices, which will be on sale in the next few days, is uh, they're about 30% smaller than this. Mm -hmm. um, initially, they will be a bare board, but later versions will uh, will have a basic case, and uh, this is a, a full fledged computer. And what's the website that people can go to to uh, if they do want to get their order in online? The website for this is raspberrypi.org, um, and as I said, it's based out of the UK, but they're taking orders worldwide. The first batch will be ten thousand machines, and it will sell out. Almost instantly. I don't know how they're going to manage the, the load. Well, we want to get our hands on one, and I can obviously see the, the value in, in K-12 education taking advantage of the opportunity to, given the, the tight budgets, to utilize this technology in the classroom. Absolutely. And it would, I would hope that this would be something that the students themselves would, uh, would be able to own. It's something that... Um, for the cost of a field trip, uh, your parents could buy for a child, or a child could save up allowance for a week or two, um, and and have it as their personal device and experiment with it, and attach things to it, and, and have some fun with it. Well, I had the good fortune of in interviewing uh, Dr. Seymour Papert uh, a few years back when I was completing my master's work, and and uh, I know he was uh, a proponent of tinkering around and project-based learning, and and was an early proponent of one-to-one -one computing, and, and he would be uh, elated to see this, uh, this device, and, uh, and it's really coming to fruition, and, and it doesn't happen in isolation. You've had a team of people working on this, some students and, and colleagues. Yes, uh, the hardware obviously is coming from the Raspberry Pi Foundation in the UK. Uh, there are a number of different groups that have prepared software for it. Um, we've been working very hard with the Fedora project to um, uh, take the software which runs on PCs, the Fedora software, and make it run on a variety of ARM-based computers. And ARM, ARM computers are very uh, energy efficient computers. Um, taking that work one step further, we did some modification customization of it so that it would work well on this device. Um, the main constraint on this device is a small amount of memory. It's mm -hmm. got uh, 256 megs. Um, it has, uh, to its credit, an amazing graphics processor. So it has very, very strong graphics capability. So you can run 3D animation type games? You can do 3D, you can do high definition of video right. playback, uh, those types of amazing. Those types of things. And you've got the software on a card, an SD card. 
Yes, uh, as far as storage devices go, it uses uh, regular SD cards as you'd use in a camera. And um, the software mix that we've prepared uh, can install on something as small as a two gigabyte card. Um, and then in addition to the software that's in the basic image, uh, a student or a user can download any of several thousand other software packages and add that to their card uh, to customize it for their particular purposes. Fantastic. Well, I would imagine, given the interest around STEM, if you will, uh, in North America, that this will generate a lot of excitement in the K-12 sector. Are there going to be opportunities to pilot? Is there a website they can go to to learn more? through your center here? Uh, RaspberryPi.org is the sort of central point for all of the discussion around this. There are some educational initiatives, some technical initiatives, um, and again, initially the first batch of boards is probably going to end up more in the hands of experimenters than the educational community, and that's, that's done on purpose, right. because it's hoped that those people will move the software along, create some educational materials and so forth. Uh, I believe that the foundation expects educational pilots to start in the fall. That was Professor Chris Tyler of the Department of Information and Communication Technology at Seneca College. My name is Robert Martellacci, and until next time, keep the learning curve steep.